What is up? I'm Moana Turtle, and today we're going to be looking at six more cards to that will be a part of the Sword and Shield set, set to release in February. So we still got some time before we can actually use these cards, but we're going to take a look at some of the ones that I think could be very meta-defining. Um, we went through a handful. I would say so far of all the cards I looked at, probably the one that sounds the most busted is Rillaboom. But let's take a look at six other ones that could give Rillaboom a run for its money. And first one we're going to start off with is a turtle. Not our favorite one, but hey, it's a turtle nonetheless with Torkoal V. Let's take a look. Coming at 210 HP, 4 retreat cost. Sometimes 4 is actually a good number. Let's take a look at Flame Pillar, 90 plus damage. Discard the top card of your deck. If the card discard is a Fire Engine, does 90 more damage for a total of 180. Never a huge fan of these things where it's basically, uh, you know, chance unless you can manipulate that. There aren't too many ways to manipulate the top of your deck. Uh, there are some, but not a lot. So I don't flame, flame pillar. I'm not too crazy about. But steam crash uh, sounds super annoying. 120 damage. Discard two energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. There are so much ramp up, so much D ramp in this set and Torkoal is very strong when it comes to that. 120 damage is not a lot for a two prize Pokemon, um, but I feel like if you can sneak, like rush this, you know, let's think Welder or something, I feel like you put your opponent at very much disadvantage where like, all right, you need to somehow answer the fact that I'm removing your energy or, you know, you're just going to be behind. You have to uh, put energy on your bench and, you know, basically your active is done. Uh, so I feel like this basically forces your opponent to have an answer or, you know, you're just going to lose that race. And then meanwhile, yes, they could just put energy on the bench while you knock out their active. But during that time, you are setting up your own bench as well. So I feel like this is just, um, it's a card that's not the most powerful, but it forces your opponent to have an answer to this problem. And I feel like just to emphasize how much it is a problem, I feel like there are certain cards today that, you know, the whole point of it is just to wipe out the energy. Ones that come to mind is Lugia's GX attack and uh, Pale Moon GX, where yeah, Pale Moon can technically knock out a Pokemon, but it's super easy to work on with just Switch. Uh, but it's powered up version where it just removes all the energy. Uh, to be honest, I feel like a lot of times it's just that part that makes it so crippling, where oh, you put all your energy into this tag team, now all the energy is gone, and yes, the part the fact they'll get knocked out next turn is definitely uh, really important. But I feel like just the Kind of like um, how much it throws off your momentum is actually huge for those kind of things. So Torkoal V uh, and it's a turtle. So that's obviously a huge plus. All right. This one is another one. Uh, shout outs to Get Wrecked. Uh, he's been he's been hyping this Frost Moth up, uh, especially or no, only with its ability. Uh, it does have an attack for water colorless, 30 damage. Doesn't matter. Frost Moth coming in nine, only 90 HP, but it is only a stage one uh, but basically has kind of like that rain dance kind of thing from base set although I'm not sure if that applied to any Pokemon as often as you like during your turn before you attack you may attach a water energy from your hand to one of your bench water Pokemon uh, so yeah when we say that there's a lot of ramp up <laughs> this one probably takes the cake as the strongest one ramp up as much as you like from your hand um, Actually, Rillaboom still might beat this because it takes it from the deck to energy. Uh, so this one is limited to your hand, but you can do it as many times you want. Uh, I feel like there are, I'll, actually no, there's tons of possibilities with this. I was trying to think that, you know, maybe Blastoise Piplup, but the healing actually only applies when you use that attack, I believe. Uh, Blastoise GX can deal a lot of damage and then recycle those energy back to the deck, but you, you just need to find a way to keep drawing them out. So it's not, well, it's not perfect either. Um, but I'm sure there are tons of crazy applications that you can use with this Frost, frost Moth and create some really busted strategies with infinite ramp, assuming that you have the energy in your hand. Moving on to Galarian Rapidash, and once again, shout out to Get Wrecked. To be honest, when I first read this Pastel Vel ability, actually, we'll just do uh, Galarian Ponyta, the My Little Pony Pokemon Unicorn, coming in at 100 HP, nothing too crazy. It's attack Psychic, a typical Psychic attack, 30 plus damage, 30 plus, 30 more damage for uh, the amount of energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon. A lot of Psychic attacks do that, but Pastel Veil. 
Each of your Pokemon can't be affected by special conditions and any current ones you remove. Uh, first I thought like, you know, that's really cool, but I'm not sure exactly what this is for. Uh, but can I kind of point out, this is the how you continue to use Jirachi without a skateboard. Um, slap a U-turn board on that, which has the advantage of always returning to your hand. And then you can always, you can use the Stellar Wish and then retreat. So uh, shout out to you, Get Wrecked, for pointing that out. And Galarian Rapidash does have some potential in that in unlocking Jirachi again. One of the like strongest Pokemon out right now. All right, right here. This one sounds awesome busted uh coming stage two though stage two so uh coming at 190 hp not a huge ton for stage two but that's okay uh rock tumble fighting two colorless tumble 90 damage this attack's d damage isn't affected by resistance sure but then bedrock shake oh my 120 damage this attack does 60 damage to each bench pokemon with damage counters on it so this does apply to you but uh basically what i'm thinking is so how, yes, we need to figure out how to splash damage all over your opponent's bench. Uh, but if set up correctly, and yes, this is a double-edged sword, but at its best, I feel like this is a basically Ultra Necrozma's GX attack with setup required, but in a non-GX, non-V Pokemon that basically splashes 60 to everything. Uh, unfortunately, I feel like a lot of those mechanics to get damage all over the place is psychic based as opposed to fighting, um, but I'm sure there's a way that we can, you know, kind of like something like that Takpu Koko or something uh, comes to mind that just deals a little bit of damage all over the place and then use Bedrock Shake to basically destroy their bench. Um, you know, I feel like Ultra Necrozma is still a thing, which means that this card, like obviously the metal would be very different, but this card has a lot of potential in my opinion with that Bedrock Shake. Yes, it has some setup. Yes, it's a double-edged sword, but oh my, that is crazy. Uh, just to deal that much damage to all your opponent's Pokemon potentially. Next we have Galarian Obstagoon. Oh, that's, this guy's always weird with his arm thing. He's kind of like a straight jacket kind of thing. But let's take a look. Uh, stage two, once again, 160 HP. Uh, let's see, Violent Shout. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you, put, you may put three damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. It's kind of like a Greninja kind of thing, which, uh, 30 damage is not a lot, but hey, that's not too bad. Uh, but this one, the attack is actually the one that interests me. Obstruct for darkness and then one colorless 90 damage. During your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's bench poke basic Pokemon. So with the V Max, so it's clear that that actually evolves, so it doesn't affect anything there, but this is, it's kind of like Piplup's attack. Uh, which didn't make a huge splash when Cosmic Clip dropped, but um, you know, when as long as you're attacking, which that's pretty easy to do, this can basically be, you know, you, so you have like Zamazenta, which is like, oh, V Max, don't worry, V Max don't hurt me. To me, this is like the V equivalent. As long as you're attacking, the V Pokemon can't do anything. So um, I feel like, especially if, well, we'll see how strong V Max is. But uh, I feel like if there's a lot of V-based decks, that this is a good answer to them. It's kind of like when you have Latios out there against, and you're only playing tag team, and they start using tag perks, like, well, I'm, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do at this point. I guess I just lose. Obstagoon, I feel like, could fill that a very similar role in that way. Similar to almost like Caldeo, um, Lolan Persian, that ugly cat. So Galarian Obstagoon, interesting card, has some potential there. So the last card we're going to be looking at is Sableye V, and this thing is very interesting. I feel like it has a ton of potential. Sableye V coming in 170 HP, basic obviously, or search for one dark energy. Put a trainer card from your discard pile into your hand. Uh, anytime you have an attack that doesn't actually attack but just sets up your hand, I'm never too crazy about, but in a pinch, if it's your first turn and you're going second, sure. Uh, but Wicked Claws is pretty strong 10 damage 10 plus damage this attack does 60 more damage for each damage counter on your opponent's active pokemon so this is not that different than esper only this affects your opponent's active versus something on their bench but kind of based on how much damage they already have that's how much damage you're going to do or rather how much increased damage 
Uh, so let's just do some quick math. Let's say your opponent has 30 damage. This thing will be doing 190, bringing them to a total of 220, and then 40, you're looking at 250, bring up to 290, and I feel like five, that's the, you know, basically automatic breaking point. I'm not aware of a Pokemon that can survive a hit, one hit from a V Pokemon for only two energy. Uh, no, that's it. Nothing can survive if they have five damage counters on it, uh, because that will be doing three, like 310 damage for a single attack. So I feel like if Sableye V is on your opponent's bench, like, Every, anything that gets takes any kind of hit, you know, everything is one shot away. So this card just has so much damage potential. Um, yes, it has a setup and this obviously can't be your only, only attacker because it'll take a while for this to ramp up. So you do need something else, but like, as long as there's anything, kind of like what, what uh, Giratina Malamar does today with just this reoccurring single prize card that dishes out a good amount of damage, the thing is we don't even need 130. Just the spell tag, half, half of that, is probably good enough to knock out almost any Pokemon when you're following up with Sable IV. Uh, so Sable IV, yeah, just so much damage potential, something that I'm really looking forward to trying. And to be honest, this is going to be the first time I tried to... Uh, make something work with dark Pokemon so I'm kind of excited about that um, yeah so Sable IV is the last Pokemon we had our eyes on for today's video and uh, as always guys thanks for watching if you have any thoughts about any of these mechanics and you can uh, any insane combos come to mind let me know in a comment down below and uh, other than that guys thanks for watching um, stay tuned for you know there's still a lot of Pokemon we still have to yet to talk about for in this uh, sword and shield set uh, so stay tuned for all that on that that's all we have for today i'm one turtle and i'll catch you guys next time